have a question. Yeah. <laughs> So Holden seems kind of like a hesitant leader, if you will, like now that Miller's in the picture. Sure. What's that dynamic going to be like? With Miller? Yeah. You know, with Holden, uh, when I was when I was building the character, I wanted, because he, you could play him as this kind of prototypical, archetypal, reluctant hero guy. Yeah. And I, I really wanted to kind of push against that. I wanted to see, I wanted the audience to see him struggle into the man that he's becoming you know oftentimes you see the kind of hero just kind of arrive out of you know in every man and and I, I felt like you know what he's going through would really have some some damage attached to what's going on and, um, you know that idealism that you that you see in him in the first season and the kind of black and white morality that he kind of holds to which is naive in some ways and inexperienced in others starts to chip away the more responsibility that he gets and um, you know in some ways there's a there's a really beautiful irony with with Miller and Holden's arcs because they kind of go in reverse you know when you first meet Miller he's this jaded man who's been just burnt out by you know seeing all this corruption and all of his all of his idealism just squashed out of his life and then Julie Mao finds something to believe in again so he starts his kind of journey towards something, holding on to his humanity and finding it a little bit more. And Holden, on the other side, starts out very idealistic. And the more that he sees and the more that he experiences, the more that becomes gray. So these two men are kind of, you know, crossing and at a certain point they do switch. And, um, and it, you know, just to be able to work with Tom Jane, who's an incredible actor and an amazing guy. And, uh, we just had a blast kind of fleshing these characters out. And the dynamic between the two are really funny. It's I mean, great. Yeah, they're, it's, it's really funny. I mean, you know, he's just so off the cuff and Holden, you know, is trying to like work out everything in his head. And it's this, uh, this really fun kind of odd couple dynamic, which is really yeah, cool to play with. Now the show is one of, has done a really good job of balancing the action along with the real political stuff that's going on behind the scenes, and it's not just one type of show. It's, it reminds me a lot of Battlestar Galactica in that way that it's action and the politics. What's it like um, being able to do both sides of that and having kind of that, that meaty stuff while being able to do that action? Sure, it's amazing. I mean, you know, I think any time I was actually talking to uh, Ty uh, Frank, who's uh, one of the writers of you know who are collectively James S. A. Corey. Uh, just a couple minutes ago, and he was he was saying to me just like how how they always try to cross genres within the books, and we we tried to do that in the show as well. And, you know, honestly, like this show, it, it happens to be a couple hundred years in the future, but it really is a political thriller that that focuses around this kind of character work. And um, you know, we've we've tried to really uh, ground storyline within the politics and within the people and the action and adventure of it happens subsequently just because that's what's going on, you know. I mean, we do we do show this incredible world and the special effects are beautiful and gorgeous. Uh, and this season really does kind of grab you by the throat and not let go from the very beginning. It moves a lot faster than the first season does. Um, but at the core of it, what's driving this story forward is, it are these philosophical, um, you know, discussions or battles of, you know, factionalism versus, you know, universalism. Are you a Belter or a Martian or an Earther? Or does it not matter at all? Like, you know, what if this, if this uh, rota molecule or bioweapon or, you know, we haven't revealed what it is yet, um, it's a game changer, you know? And it's like, if, if we stay divided, there's no people left to pick a side. And um, Holden, Holden really within the story itself is the, is the only complete outlier. He doesn't associate with any side. He thinks they're all full of shit, for, for lack of a better term. Uh, and he doesn't really trust anybody. So, um, you know, I, he's he's the one in the story constantly pushing the fact that people need to come together to deal with this thing. Um, so yeah, I mean, at, at its core, it really it really is a political drama. But um, you know, it doesn't hurt to have spectacular special effects and, and awesome <laughs> ships and you know space battles and stuff too. Um, because the stakes are really high, you know, and, and you, we, we've been lucky enough and fortunate enough to be supported enough to show these massive things happening, you know, Earth and Mars you know, battling over a space station, or, you know, this, this year is far more action-packed than it even was last year, so, um, so yeah, we try to balance it out as, as best we can between the two. Um, you mentioned special effects, like, 
do you feel like it's it's easier to perform you know, after having to do, done it in the first season? Like with with, green, with yeah, green screen? Yeah, green screen, having to react to nothing now? Sure. I, you know, I, um, I've done quite a bit of green screen in, in my career. I, um, when I first when I first started acting, I was a teenager, but I I did a, a few special effects I did films kind of as well. And, you know, I found um, it's it's challenging at first, and then and then if you kind of embrace it, there's there's a there's a bizarre kind of freedom and liberation to it because you're really only limited to what you can imagine. You know, so you can just be reacting to almost anything, and they can kind of work around you sometimes. Uh, but with this show, uh, you'd, you'd be surprised, actually, the majority of what you see is built, uh, practically. So, four walls, yeah, we're in these spaces, and you know, we have 80,000 feet, square feet of studio space in Toronto. And uh, three of the largest, I think one, one of them is the largest studio in North America, full of sets that we blow up every two weeks. <laughs> you know, like every every show that you usually work on, they build a you know the, the principal kind of practical set that usually lasts the entire run of the show. We don't have that. Like we literally are destroying our sets every couple of weeks, and we just have the most spectacular production team and production designer and and, um, and carpenters, and they just they really bust their ass. It's like it's it's amazing to watch because the stuff that they do is beautiful, and it really helps us as actors get into. You're not thinking about that part. You can just focus on the scene. You, know, you can focus on the human element of what's going on, as opposed to trying to imagine the room and imagine how that room would make you feel in that moment, that kind of stuff. So um, they, you know, they've, they've done a really good job of limiting the green screen to just the outside stuff for the most part. How do you yourself feel about space travel? Like if space tourism becomes a reality within our lifetime, and you would be options to travel, but like with all the dangers that might come with it, is that something that you think you would do? Yes, yeah. absolutely. I think I think it's amazing, you know, that we live in an age where that's even a part of the conversation, you know. Um, you know, that that could be within the next decade something that people do, you know, and uh, and I think it is it's it's Obviously, the next step, you know, the kind of privatization of, of space travel with SpaceX, and um, I forget what the Jeff Bezos' company is called, like Orbital or something. Um, it's 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 always been, you know, in, in in my view, our way as human beings to be curious, you know, and um, you know, just like we go across oceans in the past, you know, this is the next step. You know, and I I think um, how how extraordinary it would be to. To try something like that for the first time, yeah, I'd be on be on that ship in a second. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned that next season is more action packed than the first season was. Yeah. What are you looking forward to coming up? Uh, well, I'm I'm looking forward to you know the first season really we built the world you know and it's like we we built the uh, environment in which this. Uh, in which this kind of conspiracy and mystery resides and, and the Rossi crew in particular are really just are trying to figure out what's going on and are, and are being thrown around it's like they're in a washing machine they're just like you know ships are blowing up and they're and they're just trying to hold on and survive and this season they really the the incentive changes like they they're they're in control of the plot the plot isn't happening to them so to speak they're they're the ones pushing the plot forward now and um, it it moves faster because it's less about what you're not seeing and more about what they're doing. Um, and, you know, it's, I mean, these are obviously based on novels, so, you know, it's structured in a very similar way, you know, where we, it's, a, it's a dense world and we, when we really wanted to stick to the premise of making it as realistic as possible. So there's a lot of setup that you need to do to make that happen, but once that, once that's finished, like, this season really moves very quickly. And um, I watched the first five episodes a couple of weeks ago, Rough Cuts, there wasn't any special effects or anything. And uh, we burned through five of them, just like back to back. I mean, it just like rolls so quickly. And we were sitting back like, oh, shit, did we just watch five hours? Like, we were binge watching this stuff. Um, and that was without any of the special effects or anything. It's like the plot really, really takes control. And, and every single one of these arcs goes deeper while the world itself grows like it, it's uh, the scale of this season is far larger than last season if you can imagine it i haven't seen the special effects yet so i have a hard time imagining it but um but you know as as we kind of push out and and, and grow the scale of this narrative we also are pushing deeper into these characters and 
uh, every single one of us has a very interesting and dramatic arc because they're going through dramatic things and it changes it changes who they are as people um, as it would because you know? I mean at the end of the last season Miller and Holden essentially witnessed this awful genocide and they they come out different people you know? they as as you would you know? like the research I did for that I spoke to um, I spoke to one of the top psychologists in the Canadian military about the, the trauma that peacekeepers experienced in Rwanda when they couldn't do anything about the genocide going on there and what that did to their psyche. And um, and obviously when you're portraying these things, you want to keep it as respectful as possible to the people who have actually gone through this stuff. Um, and to really portray that kind of realism because these, these people do go through incredibly horrific experiences. And, um, and it shapes who they are as, as leaders and people. And, and shipmates and lovers and you know it, uh, it informs all of that so um, I'm excited for everyone just to kind of see the story grow you know? I, mean, I know that's very kind of general and, and cliche but uh, my, I legitimately mean that so, uh, so yeah I'm excited about this season for people to see